Hello and welcome to this Level 3 Mathematics in Context training video for Pearson at Excel. In this video, we're going to be looking at regression. The specification references show that we need to apply and interpret explanatory, independent and response independent variables, interpolate and extrapolate apparent trends while knowing the dangers of doing so. We should be able to draw estimated lines of best fit and make predictions using and interpreting the product moment correlation coefficient, recognizing its limitations, and also use and apply and interpret linear regression, calculating the equation of the linear regression line using the method of least squares, and a reminder that candidates may be asked to draw this regression line onto a scatter diagram. So we're given two formulae in the formula book to help with this. And in the second part of that one, there is y equals a plus bx, where a is y bar, which is the mean of the y values, minus b times x bar, where x bar is the mean of the x values, and the b is referring to this b up here, s x y over s x x. In the formula book just above this, there is the product moment correlation coefficient formula, which has s x y and s x x in it. So SXY here is the numerator of this fraction, and SXX is this part in the first bracket in the denominator. So we can use that to help us as well. The mapping document, mapping content of the core maths, maths in context references to the GCSE and GCE show us that regression appears in other qualifications as well. You can see the links there. Think about teaching this in the maths in context style. So an option to look at is, for example, government spending and GDP. So researching some suitable data. Is it possible to predict the level of a government spending in a given country based on its GDP if you've got enough data for other ones to draw a regression connection from? Another option is to go to the government's census data, or the ONS, Office for National Statistics. Now, there's a lot of information there and lots and lots of data sets, so you'd have to spend a bit of time looking around. But students are often quite engaged and motivated if the data is about the area that they live in, for example. There you can look for uh, regression analysis of various, there's so many bits of data on there. Key skills for this topic include Students should be able to calculate the equation of the regression line using the formula. They should be familiar with X bar and Y bar notation. Students should be able to draw the line of best fit both from the equation and also just as an estimate by eye. The notions of explanatory and response variables should be understood. And also the concepts of interpolation and extrapolation should be understood along with the implications of the reliabilities and limitations of those two methods of predicting values. So here's a regression exam question. It says it's a table with some information about earnings and the table shows the median full-time gross weekly earnings by both gender and age in the UK. And we're asked to explain why age is the explanatory or independent variable. So one way you might like to describe that is by saying that the age of a person is fixed at any given time and age often implies experience. So wages are going to increase as age increases. If you want to sort of think about the alternative, if somebody was to get a pay rise, this doesn't then cause them to get older. There's no, it's not that way around. The mark scheme essentially says that statement along those lines that the age is set and it's the wages that vary depending on the age. The examiner's report shows that very few students could answer this question well and were unable to give a satisfactory explanation as to why age was the explanatory variable. So another part of that question asked us to find the equation of the regression line of y on x for men. But an important thing here is that we're told the regression coefficient of y on x for men is 11.29. That's interesting that we've been told that because if you recall from the formula book, we're told the regression coefficient of y on x is called b, and that's the sxy over sxx. 
calculation. But here, we don't actually have to calculate that. We've just been told it. So the regression coefficient of y on x is b equals that. But the question tells us the regression coefficient of y on x for the men is 11.29. We're interested in the line for the men. So that 11.29 is our value of b. So 11.29 is what we're going to use for b. So think about how we would do this. You might like to temporarily uh, ignore the line involving women for this. And we've got the age is x and the men are the y values. We're going to use the least squares regression line formula. So we do need to find the mean of y. So that is adding up all the y values and divided by six, because there are six of them. So that's y bar. It does do similarly for the x values, so the ages, find the mean of the ages. So we've got those two values there. And then we're just going to use this formula, a equals y bar minus b, remember we were given that, times x bar. Substitute those in and get our a value of 84.3. And then remembering to actually write this as an equation. So y equals 84.3 plus 11.29x. Mark schemes, five marks for this. So a mark for finding the mean of x, another mark for finding the mean of y, a mark for finding a, and a mark for writing it as an equation, and accuracy mark for having the correct values as shown. Examiner's reports for this shows that for students that did not get full marks, some of them were just calculating the wrong statistics. So maybe they were finding the standard deviation or the PMCC. So sort of a lack of understanding of what it was they were supposed to be trying to calculate. And it's also noted here that you can get full marks by using an appropriate calculator method, as long as obviously there's no errors in the data entry. And I note that there were some, some blank responses for this question. So top tips for this topic are that you're going to need to give students plenty of practice using the formula. And you can do this both when the small sets of data are involved and also summary statistics. So small sets of data like we saw just then, but also could be given the summary statistics to plug into the SXX and SXY formulas. Uh, you're going to allow students experience of data that includes outliers because sometimes they're asked to consider those and remove them before performing calculations with the remaining data. You should aim to give students lots of practice identifying explanatory and response variables and being able to articulate which one's which and why. In a more broad sense, the concepts of interpolation being generally reliable should be reinforced. And you can find examples where extreme extrapolation would lead to nonsensical answers, including like maybe they lead to negative values where that doesn't make any sense, perhaps. And a method that makes use of a calculator's built-in function can lead to full marks, but typing in the wrong value could also result in zero marks. So we would recommend that students show some working as they go along. Thank you for listening to this video. I hope you found it useful.